Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. It's always exciting to celebrate a birthday with an organization that's older than I am. <laughs> so I think it may be older than, than my guest here. We're here with Steve Tobin, who is the president of Colonial Players, who is celebrating your 75th season. Is that true? Yes, diamond anniversary. Holy mackerel. I, I didn't realize that you guys had been around quite that long. I think we are the oldest continuous arts organization in Anne Arundel County. I don't know that for certain, but the arts organizations that I know of were certainly older than they are. So, I mean, you know, Maryland Hall doesn't have that. No. Uh, the the, the Symphony, opera just did 45, I think. Yeah, um, 1949. Wow. That's great. Well, the last time we talked, mm -hmm. um, I believe we were hiding behind masks. We were. Uh, <laughs> we were. We were socially distanced. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. And we learned a little bit about how Colonial Players operated in a, in a pandemic. And you guys learned an awful lot there as well. Yeah. Um, do you guys still do the? I know you did the streaming and stuff like that. Did that carry on post-pandemic? So it did for a bit. We are at the mercy of the uh, owners of the rights, whether they will allow streaming. Oh. And um, it, it turns out that Unfortunately, none of the shows in this year's season um, have streaming rights to even obtain, with the exception of A Christmas Carol, but that's our, our local version. That's, that's, that's the... Um, and uh, we still got to figure out what we're doing with that. Um, usually that uh, sells out. We might be able to offer some streaming to that, but I don't want to promise anything yet because we haven't decided. No, that's, that's fair enough. But Colonial Players, for those who don't know, are at 108 East Street. and they've, uh, have you, you haven't been here all 75 years, have no, you? No, I think the first uh, five years we were actually um, uh, downtown in Compromise Street in the old uh, rec center. Um, but in 1954, we moved up here. Uh, okay. This used to be a uh, auto service center somewhere underneath the stage or the old uh, service pits and, and, you know, where the grease monkeys yeah, used yeah, to crawl. Yeah, super fun site. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, we cleaned all that up uh, several wink, years wink. ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's filled in. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it would be some interesting archaeology uh, underneath the stage. Colonial Players is a... I think you're calling it, I would call it a theater in the round, but I think you're calling it like a 3D experience or <laughs> a theater in the square, um, theater in the rectangle. Um, but yeah, we're theater in the round. It just means that the audience is on all sides of the of the action. Uh, and you are an all volunteer organization and it's a, you are the true definition of a community theater. That's what we'd like to think. I mean, 100 percent of our staff, our cast, our crew are all volunteer. I will say that occasionally we have to hire in specialists just to teach us things. So, Fair. you know, um, uh, uh, stage combat, we take safety very seriously. So we'll get certified professionals to come in and, and teach us those kinds of things. But other than that very specialized work, 100% volunteer. Well, that's just an expense. Yeah, as, it is as kind of expense. To. Yeah. yeah it's, also, it's also making sure everybody's safe and taken care of. Well, I know you, it was funny before we started recording, you were telling me that, you know, one of the stage manager's jobs is to make sure that the emergency exits are clear on the way. Yes, before, that's true. Yeah. You know, before the, before the, I would say before the curtain goes up, but there's no there's curtain, no here, curtain but, here, but yeah, uh, lights before, come on. Yeah. Before the characters come out on, uh, yeah. on, onto stage, the, uh, so you can, you can feel confident coming to Colonial Players that the emergency exits are yes. <laughs> operational any night. This is your 75th season. It's getting ready to open up on September 8th. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty exciting. It's it's incredible. And, and, you know, we've been able to come out of COVID. You know, audience is starting to come back, which is exciting. Every show we did last year was just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, I am, I, we're thrilled to celebrate. Um, there's also kind of a little bit of a, a, a weight of history. You know, we're, we're only the, the latest generation to take uh, responsibility for this, uh, this organization. And there have been countless uh, generations uh, before us. And um, it's because of what they did that we're 
here today. Um, we're in as such good shape as we are. And, you know, there's a little bit of that, you know, responsibility that kind of weighs on it. So you both want to celebrate the anniversary and make sure that you're, you're setting up uh, the organization to continue for the next 75 years. Yeah, for the 100th. <laughs> Whatever. So, well, you're caretakers of a of an entity that's We're been only here for, for three a little quarters while. of a century. Absolutely, we're only here for a little while. And a little bit of a Boy Scout, leave it as good or better, better than yes. when you got here. Yes. Well, you guys, how many productions do you do in a year? I mean, is that so, a standard thing? Well, so it um, it fluctuates a little bit, um, and certainly COVID um, kind of caused us to rethink that. Um, prior to COVID, we were doing six main stage shows and a holiday show a year, which is a huge amount of programming. During COVID, it was hit or miss, and coming out of COVID, we're down to five main stage shows a year and and the holiday show, so six total. And uh, you know, we take the summers off and uh, do some special projects, take care of our buildings, maybe do some workshops, um, do some other uh, smaller programming, uh, so that we can kind of catch our breath and and go into the the next season. Well, you're opening up September eighth mm-hmm. with Tartuffe. Did I Tartuffe? Tartuffe, yeah. No E on the end. No E. Even though it's a French word. Yeah, no accent on the E. Okay. So it's silent. Tell me about, tell me about Tartuffe. Well, Tartuffe is a, a, a Moliere comedy. Uh, Moliere was writing in the uh, 1660s in France. Uh, it's a translation uh, by Richard Wil- Wilbur, who was the poet laureate of the U.S. at one point. Also wrote uh, some uh, translations for Candide, uh, the musical with Leonard Bernstein, and he's sort of one of the definitive... Uh, translations of the work. It is a comedy. It is a farce. It is about uh, a character who uh, insinuates himself into a a rich household uh, through uh, expressions of piety and religiosity and really takes on the persona of a a saint incarnate. But he's essentially a con man. And um, he's able to sort of con the household into uh, the the head of the household, into you know basically giving him everything, his daughter, his money, whatever, while everybody else in the family is kind of looking at this, going, why does he believe this person? Can't he see what's going on? And um, it's a farce, so there's some broad humor. It's actually translated into rhyming couplets, so it's it's a verse play, and there's a lot of humor from the poetry, from the rhyme and and near rhyme and missing, um, and uh, you know, deep down there's some interesting themes that kind of apply to today in terms of people believing one thing about one person and having to having those beliefs confronted and challenged and, and see how, um, uh, how things come out at the end. Sounds like a good one for an opener. Have you ever done Tartuffe before here? So, no, and that was one of the themes for our 75th anniversary. Um, for our 50th, uh, what the theater did was they picked one play from every decade. Um, for the season. For okay. the season that they had done. So, they, so the, the 50th anniversary was all repeats, but one from each decade. For the 75th, we decided to go in the opposite direction, which was things we had never done but kind of wished we had. And nope. so, except for Christmas Carol, which, of course, we always do, Right. every play in the season is something we've never done before. Interesting. Now, your actors that are here that are volunteering for this, I mean, are there plays that are beyond their capabilities? So I would say no. There are plays that are beyond this theater's capability because the in the round. Well, that's staging and, and, and yeah. Everything else so I would love to do noises off, but we can't do noises off in this in this theater. Um, it doesn't work in the round. Um, but you know, we've done Shakespeare, we've done uh, rhyming verse plays before, um, we've done door farces, which are you know comedies that depend on sort of slamming doors and people just missing each other before okay. you know. Um, so we're we're actually um, quite adept at figuring out ways to to do uh, plays in this in this space, and all of our actors are up to it. When we did Shakespeare, there were people that came out of the woodwork to do Shakespeare, and you know when we did Book of Will, we had 
uh, people, which is about Shakespeare, though not Shakespeare. Um, we had people who were driving, you know, 45 minutes an hour to, to be a part of the show. Um, that was a great show. I was here. I was here for. I think it was probably probably the second or third from the final one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I, I don't. I really believe that you know the only difference between a good community theater actor and a professional actor is that the community theater actor has to do something else for a living. A professional actor is doing it for a paycheck. Partially. I mean, I, I don't yeah. think anybody goes says, hey, you know, I'm going to get rich. And, yeah. I, I'm nope, going to get Jeff Bezos money and, yeah. and, <laughs> and acting. But uh, and there is some sort of passion and love with it here. But I mean, you know, it is that's what drives this theater. Oh, yeah. Is the passion and love. It is so totally the passion and love. One of our one of our, um, I guess, taglines is, you know, for the love of it. That's why we do this. We do this. Be, I mean, we, we spend hundreds of hours rehearsing, putting on a play, and an individual spends hundreds of hours doing that, uh, making that commitment. And, you know, we do it for the enjoyment it gives us, as well as hopefully the audience, and, and you know, uh, for the love of the art form. I mean, you talked about hundreds of hours of rehearsing, and we were a couple of days here before the opening of Tartuffe. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to get that name right before yeah, the did. end of this. That was, that was exactly right. Um, I mean, how long is 100 hours? I and mean, when did you start rehearsing for this? I mean, this, obviously, oh. the set looks completely different than before. You've got a new floor. You've got, you know. Yeah, so, uh, you know, auditions are typically uh, three months, uh, two to three months before the show. Um, depending on the show, it might be a little bit more on the three-month side versus the two-month side. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're rehearsing um, three, four days a week week in and week out, and then um, you get down to the opening, near the opening, and it, it becomes, you know, virtually every day. Um, there's a reason we call it Hell Week, and then you open, and then, you know, we do a full four weekends of performances. So a lot of community theaters only do two weekends of performances. Um, we do a full four, 15 shows typically, and um, it's it's not just the actors and the director, and the, but the the house crew, the stage crew, the lighting crew. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort and a lot of people. You, you, can, tell it, you can tell it is yeah. you can, as, as you look around. And I mean, I think just from a production angle, it's got to be so difficult, much more difficult with the theater in the round and that, uh, you know, you've got to move props around. You've got to uh, make, you know, change scenes. It, it, we, we're in a living room right now. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no place to hide. Um, and you've got to figure that out. It's a wonderful challenge. I mean, it's a it's a unique aspect of this kind of performance. And and the theater itself is so wonderfully intimate because of it. So you know, no seat is more than maybe ten feet from from the start of a stage. Um, and yet, there's 180 seats in this house. You get to experience the actor, not just see them when they're on the stage. That's abso absolutely true. And there is no fourth row in this theater. I don't believe. Uh, Fourth row on one side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, most of them are three rows, so it's uh, as I said, you're right, right up close with the action there. Um, what is you know your personal favorite? I mean, you've been in the acting world. Um, have you ever have you ever been a professional actor? So uh, right out of college, yes, and I did my my I did my professional um, acting apprenticeship at the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival. Um, and I did a little bit of uh, professional acting work uh, after that, and then I also did uh, a, a bit of uh, professional directing, and then um, decided that uh, I uh, didn't like looking for the work as much as I liked doing the work. Um, so, uh, and that's that's a hard thing. And so that's <laughs> when I, I decided to do something else and do this. Uh, theater, acting, and directing as an avocation rather because than right as a vacation. Because right back to the love of it. it. Just do it for the love of it. Yeah. Do you have a, um, a, a favorite production that you have done? I mean, I know now you've typically, and you were in the Book of Will last year. I was. That, and But that was sort of a, a I don't say a one-off, but a, yeah. an oddity. Yeah. Um, I, I, it was. I mostly direct, and I'm a, a huge fan of uh, uh, Shakespeare. Early in my career, I was, uh, my favorite uh, play was the Elephant Man, and I'd both acted and directed that a couple of times. I think I got it, got that out of my system. Uh, have moved on from that, but um, I, I love, I love the classics. I love farce. 
Um, it's uh, it's hard to pick a, a specific show. It's easier to pick a genre, um, but uh, they they I love doing them all. There's something in everything. And you prefer to be, I say, behind the lens, if you will, but d directing as opposed to acting at this point. Yeah, there are some parts I would I would definitely Kill for. hurt some people to get, but um, which one? Uh, well, we talked about this a little bit in, in, in Book of Will. I would I would love to do Iago. I think I'm getting a little too old for Iago. Um, I would love to do uh, Prospero uh, and and you know the great the great Shakespearean roles. Um, but that's just because I'm a classicist at heart. But right. Well, your shows typically are Friday night. Two on Saturday and two on Sunday, right? And we do do Thursday nights. Um, so uh, the the opening weekend is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and the rest of them are uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, except for the final weekend. Sometimes we don't do a Sunday matinee on the final weekend. Okay, so do you have matinees Saturday and Sunday? Just those? Sunday. Oh, just Sunday. Okay. We, we do. We have three three matinees minimum. How dare your people need a life? <laughs> You know, it's what we do. Well, I, you know, I sit here and I look at this, and, and how many people are all involved in Colonial Players in, oh. in total? I mean, okay, I, I know it varies from production to production, and right. not everybody is involved in every production. Yeah, so we, we have approximately 120 members. Now, some of our members are members uh, that are supporting, you know, just because they're in the audience, and they love us, and they want to be a member. We're a membership organization. Um, and we encourage people to come in to, to become a member, um, to help have a say in what this theater does and how it does it, and, and to, um, to help us uh, keep going for another 75 years. Um, so we have 120 members. We have uh, 10 board members and um, countless dozens of uh, volunteers who work in the box office, who work... Um, uh, and house management who usher for us, um, uh, who work in the scene shops and the costume shops and the prop shops. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I would say that we have, um, you know, easily 50, 60 active members that are there day in and day out. And, you know, certainly everybody pitches in. Okay, and then, and then they're involved, obviously, in various capacities through each production as well, whether it be acting or... Yep. Ushering or stage managing or building the set, whatever yeah. it may be. And and we have we we love when people we've had it happen before. We love when people just walk up and and see activity happening in the theater during rehearsal or something like that. And and they get they come in, they take a tour of the theater, and they're like, okay, how can I help? Where do I sign up? Where do I sign up? And we love that. That's awesome. We try to be that. We try to be accessible. We try to have, you know, that kind of relationship with the, with the street. As well. And you said you've got 180 seats here? 180 seats, yeah. It doesn't look that way. There's I know. Around. I know. And, I mean, when you think about it, okay, so that's, that's 45 on a side. So if you kind of look at one side and you say, okay, yeah, I can see that's about 45 seats. Okay, so now you're bringing like math into it. I know it's terrible. <laughs> I know that's that's the other that's the other part of me. It's math. Well, I mean, and pretty much you do a you know during your season you do a production a month, ish. Yeah, um, we've got Tartuffe from the eighth to the thirtieth of mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. Wit jumps in here October twentieth to November eleventh. Right. A Christmas Carol December seventh through the seventeenth. That's a short one. Yep. Marjorie Prime from January twelfth to February third. Right. The Baker's Wife, which is a musical, from yep. March 1st through the 30th. Yeah. And The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, April 26th to May 18th. That's right. Uh, and then summertime rolls around, you guys all go to the beach and uh, for a little bit oh. and then come back here and get, yeah. get to work. Yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll figure out, we'll do what we always do, which is you know, maybe do a couple of special projects, maybe do... Um, uh, certainly do some maintenance on the, on the theater. And, um, uh, but... Uh, yeah, we uh, and and we help out over at, at Summer Garden. A lot of our okay. folks do double duty. You know, that's one thing that I do. Like I was speaking with um, Listen to Mary Brown, uh -huh. and uh, I love the way that the arts community. And I don't know whether this is true in every every city, mm -hmm. but certainly in Annapolis, how uh, there's not a lot of animosity. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And we help help each other out. Um, uh, you know, I've I've actually directed at Compass, and um, 
we, Colonial has lent costumes to other theaters and uh, props. You know, we, we exchange, uh, certainly exchange people. We, you know, there, there's a call goes up from Summer Garden that they need uh, help with lighting design and or right. lighting hang, Notices light hang. posted up here and, <laughs> it, and you know people will run over there and help out and and um, yeah I it, certainly you know between the the Annapolis Children's Theater um, uh, Second Star and uh, Bowie Community Theater over in uh, in the Crofton area yeah we all cooperate as much as we can you play nicely the other we way. do we do and 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 our actors work in different places so you know they, true they, 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 well you talked about your members discussing about how the theater should be run mm -hmm. and everything else i mean how do we pick productions so that's an uh, a really interesting uh, and and quite frankly uh, does it involve uh, oil and wrestling yeah, or no no mud it, or anything it, but it does involve a lot of input and um, we, uh, we have a, a committee that the artistic director establishes that, um, and it's a good-sized group, and it, it represents a cross-section cross of uh, our membership and our audience. And they, they go through and they read a lot of plays. And, um, you know, we try and have a good mix of comedies and and. and tragedies and dramas and and old and new and and you know so we're constantly trying to to find a good mix um and not just do old standards all the time and it's surprisingly hard i think in some cases it's getting harder and harder to figure out uh good plays that will work for our audiences that will work here. But that also, I mean, part of the community in community theater is the community of our actors and our performers who want to do tell a particular story as well as audiences who want to see a particular story. So we're constantly trying to balance that. I mean, our community is not just our audiences, it's also our, our actors and directors. Obviously not everybody can act in every production. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there some superstar actors? I'm not asking for names. <laughs> Uh, but I, I mean, are, are there are there some superstar actors in town that that you're like, oh yeah, this is a, a perfect role for him or her, or this is who we need to have for this? Or? So so it's very important. We never, and as a matter of fact, we are expressly forbidden from precasting. So nobody ever has a shoe in for any role. Um, we are blessed in this community to have. You know, a bunch of strong actors. And There's a ton of talent in this community. There is. And so even if you had, you know, to say, is there a superstar actor? There are dozens of superstar actors. And, and, and what often causes one to get chosen over another is the chemistry with the other actors in a particular part. So you're, you're, you're always casting an ensemble as well as an individual. You know, we also try very, very hard to create opportunities for people that don't have a lot of chances. We're a community theater. If we want, if somebody wants to try acting, we like to also select plays that have opportunities for people in smaller roles or who maybe have never done any any kind of thing, any acting before, to come in and, and as we say, play with us. One of your signature productions is A Christmas Carol. Yep. And again, that, that year, this year it's going December 7th through the 17th. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a tale as old as time, to borrow a... Is that a, yeah. is that a, Disney, is that a Disney line or <laughs> yeah, something like that? But, but with a little bit of a twist, yep. uh, you guys sort of rewrote it. And um, you've been performing that probably for 75 years. Not quite. Uh, that debuted uh, in 1981. So um, we're, what, at like 42 years worth of okay. doing that? Um, it is our uh, Rick Wade, Dick Gessner musical version, um, which we do uh, now every other year um, just to uh, give us a break and also to create some excitement when it does come around. And uh, this year we uh, are having a what promises to be a fairly traditional version of our Christmas Carol. Uh, director Debbie Barbara Eaton, she has um, been involved with Colonial players for 
years and years and years and years. And she loves the show, and it's going to be very much a, a um, an homage to uh, tradition. And um, coming out of COVID, it will be you know the first time we've been able to really put on a full staging of it with you know huge casts and all the costumes and. Uh, a live band and um, in a full room in a full room and uh, you know it's always a sell it's always a joy to see people lined up uh, on on ticket sale day um, and uh, it's it's great great fun and we're so happy that the stars aligned and and it's part of our 75th anniversary season it it'll be a great uh, a great midpoint to our season as an insider what's the best way to get tickets be in the show <laughs> okay. All right. Or be involved in the show. If you're not involved in the show, get here early and be on be in the line. We do have scarcity, so um, once the it's almost always a sellout, and once the tickets sell out, uh, we we can't we can't. Have and it is only a ten day run, so it is only two weekends. So yes. Now we do uh, for that show. Uh, we still do um, sixteen shows, so we'll do uh, two a days and and sometimes three a days for 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 Christmas Carol. I guess you guys like. I don't know whether you, when you're done with that many shows back to back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. I mean, do you go to the bar and like slam it down or do you go home and put your feet up? <laughs> or both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Depends on the person. Both have happened. <laughs> It's a hell of a lot of work for two weeks. It is. It is. But it's such a fun thing. And um, the audiences love it and we love it. And it's, a, it's a, you know, a Rick Wade and Dick Gessner wrote it intending it to be a gift to the community. It's why um, it's a special offering. Our ticket prices are about half our normal ticket prices for that show. And really, it's just a gift of the season that we're, we're blessed to be able to give back to the community. That's fantastic. Well, I want to talk about how to support Colonial Players. And first of all, you can go to the website, thecolonialplayers.org. Yep. And that gives you all the information. But aside from acting... Aside from, you know, becoming a, we'll say, a working member, tickets. Buy tickets, come see productions, see the wonderful amount of talent that we have in this town and in this theater. Uh, and I would say, you know, the performing arts were really hit by COVID. As everybody hunkered down for obvious reasons and started watching things on streaming channels and looking for other ways, other means of entertainment... I will say that, you know, live theater has um, been slow to come back. And um, so I would I would encourage, you know, this wonderful arts community to go out and support the performing arts generally, but support uh, live theater, um, you know, turn off Netflix for a bit and go out and see. You bring up a point. I don't care how good the technology is. Uh, with with streaming and you know the H, high def and all 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 the other garbage that goes with it, there is nothing that will replace being in a theater. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a 180 seat Colonial Players Theater here on East Street or whether you're in some giant theater up on Broadway with you know 1,500 of your closest friends. There is nothing that can replace being there. And and I think the same way with movies too. I mean, I can stream all I want, Netflix and everything else. But there's nothing that ex it replaces the experience of sitting in a theater and watching it. And live concerts. I mean, it's something. There's something about the shared experience, about everybody experiencing the same thing at that moment. And also with live performance, there's the variation. I mean, no evening is exactly the same, even though you're doing it 15 times, and even though an individual may be standing in the same spot when they deliver. A certain line or a certain speech, there's always variation to it. It was funny last year during the Book of Will, I can't remember exactly what the line was, but somebody had said something or other, and uh, the three other people that were with me didn't hear it, and I did, and I like I was the only one to laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that happens. <laughs> and and I'm, happens. I'm like, oh my, I'm like looking around, going, you heard it too, did you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and you know, especially with comedies, uh, the feedback's always different. And and there's there ends up being this this wonderful feedback loop that the audience watches the actor, the actor feels what the audience is giving off, and reflects that back. And there's this feedback loop, and you don't get that with movies. No, you don't. And just you know, breathing with an audience together, you you know, you you're laughing together. You're yeah. Uh, you know, if there's suspenseful, if there's a, you know, some kind of a surprise, you're yeah. gasping, gasping. Yeah. And and that's 
really what theater is all about. Yeah, it's the shared experience. It, it, it truly is. Um, season tickets? Season tickets still for sale. Is that uh, considered a membership? Uh, no, you can buy one independently of the other. Uh, our membership is um, $10, very modest. Um, and if you work on a show, you get your first membership year free. Huh. So, so we comp your membership for the first year if you work on a show. You get to help guide the way the organization works. What's your age group of the folks that are members that are working on the shows? So um, I, I, I get the reason I'm, I'm this is purely selfish reasons because I get asked an awful lot. Hey, I'm new into town. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I meet people? And I'm sitting here thinking that this might be. Oh, this is a great place to meet people. We've had a lot of a lot of marriages come out of, came out of this uh, out of this theater. Uh, and um, uh, a lot of people, the, the relationships that form here, even if they aren't couples, um, just persist for years and years and years. And uh, it, it is truly becomes a family. And we have every, everybody, every age group um, from, um, we've had uh, a lot of high schoolers come in and work and intern here. Um, we do, uh, we are an approved, a um, approved internship program with AACPS. We've got high schoolers that work. We've had uh, high schoolers on stage, be stage managers, uh, college, St. John's folks have come over and, and worked with us and, um, you know, newly graduated people, all ages, especially work on the show. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of our audiences, as is true of live theater in general, tend to skew a little bit older. But, uh, you know, we, we constantly are hoping that, you know, audiences regenerate themselves. Well, I, I would also think also, Ken, I have no acting desire. Mm -hmm. I have no acting skills. Is there a place for somebody that, you know, maybe uh, just wants to be here and be around there? That, Absolutely. that you know, a carpenter Absolutely. that has, you know, we'll say zero personality or outgoing, for, you know, that would, you know, rather be buried alive than be. <laughs> we, we have some people um, that have. Uh, worked with us for a very long time who have basically said they would rather walk on glass coated with lemon juice than be on the stage. Um, but they are uh, here show after show after show helping out backstage with props or uh, being an usher or, or, and, and they just love being a part of it. And the family isn't just the actors. The family is the actors and the crew and everybody that's involved. And right. Uh, you are a nonprofit. We are a nonprofit. So we can just like give money or perhaps put in the will all our worldly possessions. Sure, sure if you want to do that. I will say, you know, we are very grateful for our donors as well as our patrons. More important than money is time. And people who give of their time are equally as valued if not in some ways more so than people who give up their money. Um, not that we're ungrateful. We're, we're truly thankful for any contribution. Well, they're also different. As, as people progress through life, yep. that commodity of time waxes and wanes. Yes, it does. And, I, I mean, I know I did leadership in Arundel, and they were after me for years to do it. And it was like, no, 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 no. And finally there was like, okay, the kids are all out of college. They're, you know, I'm like, hey, I can do it. And so, I mean, you, you've got that situation. I mean, that probably is where your audience skews is a little bit, where it gets a little bit older. Because yeah. typically in older, you get a little bit more time available where you figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. And, and you know, that's the, the thing. You know, coming out of COVID, people were tired. People were just tired. And getting into gear and coming back and putting in those long hours and putting in that stuff became, you know, difficult to get into gear. And, and I think we're starting to see people get into gear again. The patterns are, are reestablishing themselves, and I'm very optimistic uh, for the future. But we love it when people come and, and join us. As an actor, as a director, you go through different stages of a production. You've got, you know, you figure out what the, what the production is going to be. You've got your starter rehearsals opening night. Uh, again, that's going to be for our Tartuffe on September 8th. What is the best part? for somebody that's involved in the production of that production? Is it when that figurative curtain here at Colonial Players opens up in the play start and the production starts? Is it when the run is done? So that's a really interesting question. I think um, 
I think it really is, I, I would probably say, for me personally, it's, I think, the second night. So the first night, there's all the tension and all the nerves and all of the expectation. And you're really hyper concentrating. And, and you know, the show's finished. And that's when you get the feedback. You say, like, oh, yeah, they got that. Or, you know, um, I once did a comedy, I directed a comedy, and it was one of these gut busters by the end. And I had one of the actors come up to me after opening night and said, I really didn't think it was that funny. And they were like, I said, yeah, it's that funny. And they were like, no, I get it now. It's that funny. (laughs) Um, And, you know, so for me, I think sometimes it's the second night where it's like, okay, I get it now. I know how this is going to work. I can enjoy it. I can I can dig into it, and I can really have fun with it. And that's, for me, that sort of starts with the second. All right, it's a great prank. I'm going to see if I can get a paper of the room with 180 people. Yeah. Okay, the curtain closes, and they just sit there. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> There's no applause. There's, There's no, no idea. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. That, 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 um, that would be hysterical. That would be a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> do, do, do. please do that just before I, I just before I get rid of that. I don't think my heart could take that. So don't, <laughs> please don't do that to me. Please don't do that to me, John. Uh, well, again, I think everybody, the arts community in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County, uh, is the heartbeat of a community, and it doesn't matter whether it's live performance art, as we're talking about here at Colonial Players, or maybe it's sculpture, maybe it's mm-hmm. uh, some kind of a modern impressionistic thing. I mean, you look at all the murals that we've got around town. It's amazing. Um, you know, statues, you've got that Italian guy standing in the middle of Westgate Circle. It's all around us here, yeah. and it's what makes a community a community. Yeah. Um, art does not discriminate uh, on, you know, gender, sexual orientation, color, poverty or wealth or anything anybody can do it and anybody can appreciate it and everybody does appreciate it uh in in their own different ways Uh, i do recommend everybody get to the colonial players at least once if not six times this season on their 75th 75 diamond anniversary and we're we're hoping we have some um some additional programming this year along those uh lines like what type well we're we um we're certainly going to have a, a big gala to celebrate, uh, and that'll be uh, later in the year. We are uh, looking, so we have a history project that's going on. So any of uh, our patrons, listeners who have been involved with Colonial Players that want to uh, record a memory, um, we have our own historian um, who is recording that, both in long form for some of our longtime member, members and short form for just people who um, have a memory maybe about a Christmas carol or about a show that they saw. Um, we're trying to collect all of those in sort of a, 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 an oral history. We hope to have some uh, guest artists. Um, we're working very hard to bring some, some guest artists to town, uh, sort of play with us, not in, in a show. The shows will be strictly, okay. you know, our current community theaters, but um, maybe some, um, some extras that will uh, come in town. I uh, hope, hope to have some announcements about that in the future. And then um, certainly we'll be doing our usual collection of readings and, and uh, uh, special presentations when we can throughout the year. So, Thecolonialplayers.org is where you want to go to get started. Uh, again, get out to at least one show this year. Buy season tickets. Buy season um, tickets. We, we Become a member. Definitely become a member. And they'll waive the fee for the first year. <laughs> That's right. And, and uh, you know, be a volunteer. Come, come, and, come and enjoy us. Steve Tobin, thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, I guess the thing is, what, break a leg when you open up on yeah, the 8th? Is yeah, that the, yeah. Where does that come from? Uh, it may actually, now that I think about it, I think it comes from um, uh, John Wilkes Booth, who broke a leg jumping off the balcony. Ah, at, at Fort Sanger. Not suggesting that someone should assassinate an elected official and break a leg, but I think that's somehow it's connected to that. Steve, thank you so much for your time tonight. Oh, thank you, John. It's always a pleasure, and thank you for for coming out and supporting us. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, 
Please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.